you very much. Give it up for the New Century Big Band. Got to catch our, our breath. That was two bass hit, originally composed by John Lewis, arranged by Mr. Michael Dees on the trombone. How y'all feeling second set? Y'all good? I think y'all need to drink a little more, because when I, when I say how y'all feeling, I'm from the church, y'all got to say yeah. yeah. So how y'all feeling? Yeah. All right, all right. We're so happy to be here. This is the maiden voyage for this big band. Uh, this is the second time we have played together. The first time was at 7.30, and we had a rehearsal yesterday at 1 o'clock. So this is an exceptional group of people and musicians. Uh, New Century, the name came from a band that originated by, I call him my brother from another mother. His mother's from Hiroshima, mine's from Florida. The co-leader is Mr. Takeshi Obayashi. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you. And New Century is a hybrid Japanese-American band. We tour a lot in Japan. We get a chance sometime to play in New York, even though we all live here. Uh, and that band is also Mr. Benny Benak on the trumpet. <laughs> Mr. Tim Green on the alto sax. And the unofficial sixth member is Mr. Michael Dees on the trombone. Mike Dees has been saying to me for a long time, he says, man, you're one of my favorite big band drummers and a lot of people love your playing um, in the big band setting. I really think you should start a big band. I said, well, I've been wanting to for a long time, but my wallet said something different. So, <laughs> so thanks to Jazz and Lincoln Center, they, they make so many of my artistic dreams come true. We're able to do, yeah, let's give it up for them. We're able to do the big band and have it here tonight. So thank you. I just want to very briefly uh, tell you about uh, everyone in the band, or at least give you their names, because they're all so, so talented. Uh, we have on first tenor, and also you're going to hear some of his amazing arrangements, Mr. Michael Thomas, <laughs> Ms. Lakeisha Benjamin on alto, Mr. Daniel Dickinson, yeah. Carl Moragi on Barry Sax, yeah. Eric Miller, <laughs> Gina, <laughs> Banal Kazar, <laughs> One of the legends in New York City and around the world, Mr. Tom Bones Malone. And I used, you know, somebody used to tell me all the time, they said, hey, one day you are not gonna be the baby in the band. And that day has come today because we really do have a baby in the band. 17 years old, Mr. Wyatt Forehand. <laughs> It freaks me out because every time I, I call him and hit him up for a gig, he's like, Mr. Owens, Mr. Owens. I was like, hey, bro, can you chill on the Mr. Owens thing? Um, in the trumpet section, I've, I've had a chance to play in some really great big bands, and this guy was number one on my list, just like Tom Bones Malone, because they play with everybody. And I didn't know if he was going to even be willing to play with me, but he was so gracious. This is literally the best lead player in the world. This guy is, everybody loves him. Give it up for Mr. Frank Green. <laughs> And for those that may not know, I'm from Florida, which means I'm a little country, and I need a little country in my band. So we got also from Jacksonville, Florida, two of my favorite people. We like to say Duval. Duval. <laughs> Alfonso Horn on the trumpet and Marcus Parsley on the trumpet. And holding it down, my main man, he's also a new century as well, when we can get him, because everybody wants him, Mr. Yasushi Nakamura on the bass. Ya Chan. So we're going to continue on with one of Yasushi's arrangements entitled Girl Talk.
That was human nature. Give it up for the wonderful arranger, Mr. Michael Thomas. He also took a great solo and give it up for my, 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 my homie, somebody I've known for a long time. She played her butt off on that. Ms. Lakeisha Benjamin. We're gonna move on to another composition, um, a really fun one by one of the greatest saxophone voices of all time. He just had a birthday recently, I think. That is the great Mr. John Coltrane. Yeah. Give it up for John Coltrane. <laughs> and uh, Michael Dees and I, when we were putting together the music for this, he said, you know, Ulysses, not only do we wanna get some new arrangers to come in and write some material for this band, but we should also feature some music uh, that you've worked with other artists and, and sort of built a repertoire with them. And uh, he was actually here the first set. Uh, I've had a chance the last couple of years to be touring with uh, Joey Alexander, who is a wonderful uh, prodigy of a talent. And one of the first songs that I played with him that kind of went viral around the world on his first album was Giant Steps. And so when Mike and I sat down, we were like, yo, we got to do something to Giant Steps. So we went to one of his good friends, who is uh, one of his Michigan State University uh, faculty colleagues, Diego Rivera, and he wrote a wonderful arrangement. So I think you'll enjoy it. This is Giant Steps.
Giant Steps. Diego Rivera. Give it up for this band, the New Century Big Band. Come on, give it up. Always say to the audience, I have one very, very important question for you. Are you enjoying this music? I think I hear Jazz Mama in the house. Bob, you out there? <laughs> cool, we're gonna move on with the composition that um, is very, very personal to me. I, I don't write a lot of music. I'm a drummer, you know, and, and that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to. It just means that every, you know, you can't be good at everything, you know. And, and I think that, 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 no, I don't mean like that. But, but what I mean is I think everybody has distinct gifts, right? And you, if, if God gives you something cool, then hey, take that. But you can't have 50 of them. And there's some other better writers than me. But one day I got inspired, and that's really what I'm, I'm trying to say. And I, I had an apartment in Harlem, man, years ago, back when yeah, normal people who could uh, afford cheap rent could live in Harlem. That's not the case anymore. But I, I was living in Harlem, and um, at that time I had some furniture, very minimal furniture in this apartment. And there was one chair that I would sit in and all my worries would go away. And it was actually a red chair. And, uh, and it's funny because when I was struggling with writing music, I, I was in school at the time. And you know, every time we got a new uh, assignment for arranging, I was just like, oh, what am I going to do? And this one had to be an original composition. So I, I took a nap. I was in this chair. And you know how you have that period between sleep where it's like you're sort of awake and you're sort of about to wake up. It's like that kind of in middle of the, uh, uh, of the abyss. And so I was right in that place. And this melody came to me. And uh, it made it to my first record, and a lot of people really liked it, and um, a couple people have played it and put it on, on, on their record. And now I'm so honored that I got Michael Thomas to do an arrangement of it, and it's a really beautiful composition that he arranged. I'm so, so proud of my little melody that he made very complex, way more complex than how I wrote it. But I'm so honored, and so I hope you enjoy my composition, Red Chair. Thank <laughs> you. 
Red Chair, Ranger Michael Thomas.